What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idol Heroes, and today we technically have the update on server 1, is not quite out on our server yet, but you, you notice you won't see the icon for this week, it's really weird, because technically I can go in the evolution cube, and I think I can pick him, I, I'm, I don't know if I should, because I wonder if this might bug it out. Do we do it for science? It's not live on our server yet. But our account, like our overall login, has the update. Which is weird. Fingers crossed we don't completely mess things up. Nope, yeah, not gonna work. <laughs> Attempt number two. We now have the Star Swordsman button here, so I think that means we are good to go now. So let's run all the way over to the side. Oh, it's like, could I have hit left once? No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, there we go. We have our 5 million from earlier this week. And bam, we got him. So let's come on over and take a look at this hero. Because, of course, we don't know his actual skills just yet. Uh, and we might as well come in here and look at them as their transcendence imprint version. So the basic attack, has a very low damage number. And it kind of scares me right off the bat. Uh, changes the base attack to deal 320% of attack damage to a single enemy. Definitely don't like that. Additionally, skill effect takes place when the current state is star ascending. Your deal damage equal to 10% of the target's max HP, capping at 1,500% of his attack to the frontline enemies two times. Okay, that's not horrible. That's not bad. So he's technically hitting like he's doing his base attack. Then he's hitting the front line twice. If he's ascending, if he's descending, uh, he'll hit the back line two times. Okay, that's not too bad. It is a guaranteed crit. It could work out well. Uh, light slashing. So when the battle starts or when the self becomes a substitute, inflicts Omen of Rift. Now, Omen of Rift is basically just for the active ability on one random enemy for six rounds, so it only hits one target. And eh. If self is in the front line, just like the old school regular Mogman, he, he had the same style ability here. He's going to be star ascending. He's in the back line to start. He started descending, and now it will swap back and forth throughout the fight. Additional skill effects take place then based on the current state. So at the end of each round, he'll restore self equal to 320% of attack and increase all allies block by 45. That's pretty solid. He seems like a very cool tool to use with the Panda PvP team. Start descending, so that's if he's in back row, increases all damage dealt by 50%. And then each round increases all allies' precision by 45%. That's pretty cool. And of course, Omen Rift, yeah, just not. It's just something for the active ability. The third passive is when taking active or basic attacks in the state of Star Ascending, there's a 50% chance to gain one layer of awakening energy and restore self HP equal to 3% of max HP. That's not a big heal. When releasing active skills or basic attacks in the state of star descending, self gains one layer of awakening energy. Okay, interesting, interesting. So what is this? The awakening is grants skill effects to star swordsman skills. For every 10 layers of awakening energy, you'll gain one layer of awakening which will make you switch between Star Ascending and Star Descending. See, I really don't like that. I really don't like it because there's already so much RNG going on in battle. Then there's like RNG of how many times you're getting hit or releasing attacks. And eh, I don't know if I like that. And then finally, the big, big one, Star Transcendence, the active ability, 1,000% attack damage to backline enemies two times with a 50% chance to inflict taunt confrontation on them for two rounds that's not too bad if you're hitting your since you're hitting the whole back line then you're going to inflict omen of rift on another random enemy so technically you'll have the one from the beginning of the battle and then after the active it'll apply to then after you apply that omen of rift you're going to consume all layers of awakening that you have so remember layers of awakening not awakening energy full awakening which is 10 layers that's a lot that's not going to happen very fast uh, with every one layer inflecting another omen of rift one more time, additional effects will take place based on the current state of self. Uh, so star sending, you're going to reduce the attack of the two enemies with the highest attack for by 25%. 
That's not bad. You'll get more ascending energy and then start ascending. You're going to reduce armor of two enemies with the lowest HP, then chase and attack enemies with Omen Rift. This is the part I really want to figure out what it actually is doing. Doing 800% attack with a 50% chance to chase and attack one more time, up to a total of five times upon each chase and attack. So this is where, like, Star Descending is the one that almost sounds a little promising here. Don't really have a great setup going for him. I don't even have... Oh, God, wait. <laughs> oh, man, we don't even have V4 for this hero. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I think we're just going to get rid of these here. Thank you very much. Let's get him powered up. Let's do a couple little tests with him. I don't even know if we're going to go into the tree. Oh, that's one thing we should go over first is also the tree since we are going over him as a whole. So his core at level three is very interesting, which whenever switching between the states, so when you're going from star ascending to descending or vice versa, you're going to be having something take place when you switch. So with star ascending, uh, I guess this means when you're going into star ascending, increases all allies damage reduction by 15%. Decline 5% per round. It's all right. When an ally except itself takes active or basic attacks, the ally launches a counterattack, dealing damage equal to 450% of the attacked ally's attack. If the attacker inflicts an Omen Rift, you're going to do it twice. Star Descending increases all allies' crit by 18%. That's kind of good. Uh, declines by 6, so yeah, it only lasts three rounds, and then it's going to do the same chase. I don't know if that's one to really go after, really. Seems okay, but not anything like stellar. Okay, you get it, stellar. <laughs> uh, I don't know. First, first reading of this hero is not that impressive, to be honest. Let's do some tests. We're not gonna like chuck him right into end game PvP because nowadays, with all the core of origins and the tree of origin, you can't really do a good test right out the gate unless you're changing everything on your account including homeowners and all these other things to accommodate a brand new hero so what we can do is try to take a look at his skill set and then as the week goes on we'll take a look to see how the hero is actually performing so if i remember correctly i wonder if we're still on our own friends list here we are <laughs> okay that's fine whatever oh that's fine Nope, I always hit the wrong button. Every single time I hit the button. So we're just going to use ourselves as a dummy here. Oh, let's put him in the front row and just watch to see how the battle progresses. Because, of course, we don't have anybody super great to go. So front line, hit. What are the indicators here? So he's got, like, this mist around him. I don't know if that's default. He does get some good healing off. His active ability... It's the whole back line. Okay. Is there a way to tell if he's ascending or descending? That's the next thing. So those counter those are counterattacks, right? Those are some pretty strong counterattacks. Those are some pretty strong counterattacks. And granted, you gotta realize what we're going up against, but um that that seemed kind of strong. So what part was the counterattack? Uh, okay, wait a minute. Is it from the active? Is that what it is? Regaining awakening energy. Huh. That's interesting. I like the increased block. Should we, let's just look at him in the back row. Because I can't really, like, at first glance, I can't really tell what... Oh, I keep hitting that button every time now that that hand is there. Uh, let's try him in the back row and see. Oh, I put him in a bad spot for everybody to see. So, okay, the color is different. Yeah, let me do this. Let me just make this a little bit easier to take a look at. Throw him, like, back here. So when he started descending, he has this gold halo around him. So there's the active ability. It's the follow up there. There's his basic attack. Oh, maybe it was just his basic the way that it was like working out. Then again, he's in his offensive form now, so he's getting that precision buff and things like that going on. 
He definitely packs a punch. I'm surprised he does so much damage. I don't know if he's better in the front row to start or the back row. I guess it's really going to depend on what you need him for. But again, I'm kind of just... These counterattacks are what's like really big damage. 16 million and he's not even like a homeowner. He's not even core of origin awakened all that nonsense. I mean, I think the counterattack is like one of the best parts. You know what we could do? We could just try chucking him in a team against like something ridiculously powerful. No, we can't do that. That's a little too strong. <laughs> we can go up against something like this and try to put him on like a team like uh we'll just throw like a couple ro or, you know, we'll throw the pandas in. We'll do that. Pandas and a rogan, sure, why not? I'll see how this works out. I think we might completely overpower them here, but we'll see. Yeah, I think we're completely overpowering him at this point. So yeah, it's really, it's after he uses his active that he gets going with those really good counterattacks. Until he gets that active off, it's not really going to be that impressive. And we have other heroes that are just much more stronger in this team. Uh, let's, oh my god, that button, I swear that button's going to be the death of me, guys. Let's take you out and just chuck in, oh, I don't even know, another panda. <laughs> you know, let's just go full panda team. <laughs> with this and let's see how this works i think we'll probably still win just because of the overall power of our account okay so the basic attack did a little bit of damage not a whole ton we got silenced in round one so vessa must have already lost half her health So now we're going to do those counterattacks. And the counterattacks hit everybody, which is pretty amazing. Ooh. Yeah, that counterattack is where his bread and butter seems to be. Whew. And I bet he can actually counter Sword Flash with her little shield up, too. You know, let's try something. I want to just go up against this team with just the one hero and see what happens. Could be something really crazy. So yeah, he's not going to counterattack yet. We're going to get our active off. And now this is where we start decimating the whole entire enemy team. Counterattack. Counterattack. <laughs> counterattack. <laughs> oh my goodness. There's so much damage of counterattack damage. Oh my goodness. The question is, can he take out a sword flash? That's going to be the big one. Probably not, but. No, the Tick's Ghost is really going to start hurting us, I bet. He doesn't quite have enough healing. You can see now he's in Star Ascending because he has that gold little halo around him instead of the blue one. Ooh. That was a big extra hit there. Yeah, he can't take on a Sword Flash even with the counterattacks, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that's some damage he seems like he could be pretty good uh, reading the skills wasn't that impressed watching him in action kind of like it i kind of like it what do you guys think hopefully you guys enjoy this one like i said we'll test him out in a bunch of different game modes this week seems fun see you guys next time